Alexander, thank you very much. And for those who didn't know this, this was Bob Stevens' personal piano that he gave to the church a few years ago. So it was, I enjoyed hearing the music, and I, and I was thinking about Bob uh, as you were playing. So thank you very much. That was quite beautiful. <clears throat> Your scripture is easily identifiable. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. be a good mantra <coughs> for everyone to live by. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Be joyful always, pray continually, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. <clears throat> Two weeks ago, oh, before I continue, I want to thank Don Root for his sermon last week. and. Uh, it was excellent from what everyone told me, and I'm sure it was. And thank you, Don, and uh, appreciate that. Also, uh, that was last week. Two weeks ago, I, um, I preached a sermon with someone, not being the least bit unkind, I might add, thank me for the good lecture that I had given. <laughs> <laughs> they meant that in a kind way. They thought that it was informative, and uh, if you recall, I'm not going to preach the sermon again, but... It was really quite good, and it was about, <laughs> well, I liked it, and it was about, but the greatest of these is humility. It is, <laughs> and the humility starts in the pulpit and radiates out. <laughs> no, the, the sermon was quite good, and it was about the baptism of Jesus, and it was to answer the, 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 the sticky question, uh, how can Jesus, who's perfect, right, and sinless, be baptized? And, of course, I, I argued convincingly, <laughs> that it's not about the baptism of Jesus Christ, but rather, if you look carefully uh, at your Old Testament passages, uh, and particularly in, in second, the second Psalm, and a couple coronation passages that you find in Kings, indeed, what it is, it's, it's a coronation uh, moment. And, and, that, and that's what that's all about. And it was a wonderful sermon, albeit <laughs> lecture, and I appreciated that, and I, I got to thinking, <clears throat> uh, today, I have, uh, I don't have a sermon today, I have another lecture, but, <laughs> uh -oh. <clears throat> no, 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 since Jesus um, lectured people and taught people, I am in good company, so there. <laughs> see how we get around that, <laughs> fix it all up, well, uh, they're, they're what I call teaching sermons, and this one really is, is I'm excited about what I'm going to share, and, and hopefully just, um, hopefully the medium is the message. That's what I'm hoping, because I'm going to share something that I think is, is vitally important to each person uh, personally, but also, as you'll see in a moment, for this congregation. On February 17th of this year, that's Ash Wednesday. We'll have an evening service, and at that evening service, we're going to begin a church-wide sacred journey. It's a 40-day sacred journey that we're going to engage upon. It'll be a holy trip into uh, the interior recesses of, of your hearts. Already there is a, a group of, uh, I think, at least a half a dozen souls in this fellowship, maybe more, who uh, have been praying for each of us to participate in this sacred journey and to receive the blessings that will come as a result of it. This time of sacred exploration. And as you know, and I, I, I've mentioned it before and talked about it briefly from the pulpit over the last six uh, weeks or so, um, 
what we're going to be doing is we'll be engaged in, in faith sharing and praying and we'll be following a, a proven spiritual program called Unbinding Your Heart. The title, Unbinding Your Heart, refers to the responsibility that all Christians have to share their relationship, their personal relationship with Jesus Christ, if you like that language, to share that personal relationship with other human beings, to share it instead of keeping it locked up. And so as the title suggests, <clears throat> this love that we have for Jesus Christ uh, has been tied up, or rather it's been bound. And what we need to do is we need to untie, we need to loosen, uh, to use the language in this uh, manual, we need to unbind our hearts so that we can begin the process of sharing the love uh, of Jesus Christ that we have enjoyed for all of these years. And, and it doesn't, and it's real obvious that for whatever reason, uh, we have not done a very good job of that. We have not shared the love that we have with others very well. This church. And that takes place in the pulpit as well. So to this end of learning how to share um, um, the love of Jesus Christ that we do have with others, um, we, we have this spiritual growth manual that we, that we, we bought. Everybody will get one. Every person here will get one, and it's called Unbinding Your Heart. <clears throat> and here it is. 40 days of prayer and faith sharing. And uh, I've gone through it twice, worked with a group of people through it twice. It works. It's wonderful. I think it's exciting. Uh, and it will certainly led me, and I think that, I think, all of those who participated in it um, on a on a level more than just going through the motions, I think that each person who participated in it uh, came back spiritually enriched. I think that's a fair thing to say. And that's why we're doing it. What we did is uh, there were about 10 of us. We went through this two times uh, over the last, what, nine months. And we wanted to make sure that it worked. And it works. And so what's happened is with the session and it's our recommendation then that we all begin the same book and uh, follow it uh, for the 40 days during Lent. Of course, this effort is not compulsory, and if people don't feel that they need to be spiritually enriched, then obviously you wouldn't want to be about this uh, or a prayer life for that matter. If you do, and I'm sure that most everyone, if not all will, you will be given this manual soon, as a matter of fact, so that you can be reading it way ahead of time. We also will be divided into groups uh, as we go about um, this spiritual journey. And I must say, if there's a group that you don't like being in because maybe mm, you don't like me, it's understandable, <laughs> regrettable, but understandable. Uh, <laughs> but you'd rather be with somebody prettier like Suhail, then you. then you can transfer to be with Suhail if you're more comfortable with a Middle Easterner. <laughs> but all seriousness, uh, what we found in church growth, and I, I resisted this for years until I was convinced that I was wrong. I thought the church growth came um, when, when all sorts of diverse people uh, invited all sorts of diverse people, and, and that's where real church growth began. In fact, it, it takes place when people of similar ideas and viewpoints within a church bond together and invite people of similar of their similar group uh, uh, thinkings. So you need to be with groups that you're comfortable with, and if you're not comfortable with a particular group, then you're certainly welcome to, to move into one where you are comfortable.